Hello guys! Welcome back to my channel. Sa video natin today, pag-uusapan natin ang credit card. So, I'm thinking of creating a series solely dedicated sa credit cards and I'm thinking of uploading three videos. The first one is this one. It will cover the basics, kumbaga credit card 101. It's for people who don't have existing credit cards, yung mag apply pa lang, or hindi sure about credit cards. The second video will be about do's and don'ts pagdating sa credit card and it will be for people na may existing cards na tsaka sa mga nag-iisip pa lang na mag-apply. The third video, depende pa kung paano yung kakalabasan ng first two videos, yung third video will be a Q&A about credit cards. Kung meron man ako mga questions na hindi na-address, I'll give you time to ask them guys. But if you wanna know kung ano pa yung basics ng credit cards, kung ano purpose niya, benefits, Pros and cons, please keep watching. You know what, guys? It's nice that there's a platform for me to talk about this topic because I think it's a topic na dapat alam na mga tao pero hindi masyadong knowledgeable ang mga tao dahil hindi siya napag-uusapan. Kasi when I was young, I grew up in a family na never na credit card as in my dad and my mom, they paid cash for everything. Groceries, tuition fee, medical bills, lahat ng kailangan bayaran naka-cash out. And it's mainly because my dad thought na Hindi mabuti yung credit card, mababaon ka sa utang pag gumamit ka ng credit card, and madaming hidden charges sa credit card. So, swerte lang din talaga ako na kapag work ako sa bank, and mas naging knowledgeable ako about this facility, this tool, na isang neutral tool lang. It's not bad, it's not good, it depends on how you use it, kung mapapabuti ka ba or mapapasama ka. So, ayun lang guys, medyo mahaba na yung introduction ko, magsimula na tayo. So, first question, what is a credit card? Credit card is a piece of plastic na in-issue sa inyo ng bank that you can use to pay for goods and or services. Kung ano man yung amount na sinuwipe mo sa credit card mo, hanggat hindi mo siya binabayaran, it's an amount that you owe your bank. AKA, may utang ka sa bank. Don't be afraid of the word utang, guys. For as long as you pay your bills on time, diligent naman kayo sa paggamit ng credit card nyo. Hindi kayo dapat matakot. What is the difference between a debit card and a credit card? Ang pinakamadaling analogy nun, debit card is like a prepaid SIM, tapos credit card is like a postpaid line. Diba sa prepaid SIM, bago mo magamit yung services, bago ka makatawag, makatext, kailangan may load ka muna. So, magbabayad ka muna before mo magamit. Sa postpaid naman, you can use the services, you can go on roaming, use the internet, magtelebaba 24-7, and then pagdating ng cut-off date, isa-charge ka, for example, ni Globe, and you have 20 days to pay your bill. So, yun yung analogy niya. Si debit card, you need the funds first to be able to use it, and once na sinwipe mo siya, automatically deducted siya sa personal money mo. Si credit card naman, pwede mo siyang gamitin muna at ibabangga siya sa credit line mo, aka temporary, may utang ka muna kay bank, and then pag nabil na siya sa iyo, you have 20 days to fully settle the amount, and pag binayara mo siya, dun lang siya mababawas sa iyong personal funds. So how do you apply for a credit card? There are so many ways to apply, pero yung tatlo yung popular. First one is you go directly to your bank, you tell them, I want to apply for a card. They give you an application form and they ask for the requirements. Second is you can apply online. I'll just try to link credible and secure websites in the description box in case gusto nyo mag-apply online. And third, you can do walk-in sa malls. Out of the three, ano yung pinakagusto ko? Yung walk-in sa malls. Kasi namimigay sila ng free umbrella, free popcorn, free chocolate. Basta may pa-promo sila. But kahit na anong channel no ng application ang gawin mo, same lang naman yung standards ng mga banks na a-applyan mo. It's just a channel na nagkaiba-iba but the requirements are the same. So what are the requirements? First, you need to fill out application form na ipoprovide na ba nila. Second, you need a government-issued ID. Hindi pwede yung mga postal ID, TIN, PhilHealth. Hindi pwede yung mga laminated IDs lang. Ang pwede ay passport, multi-purpose ID, have PRC, driver's license, for example. And then, you also need proof of income. So, madalas ang hinihingi nila is ITR pero kung hindi ka pa nag-1 year sa work mo, tas regular ka na naman, you can provide 3 month payslip. You can actually ask your bank kung ano yung mga pwede mong submit or you can check their website. Now, generally, ano ba yung minimum amount of sweldo? Based sa experience ko nung nag-work pa ako sa bank, around 15 to 20,000 may issuehan ka na ng credit card but you can't expect a high credit limit Siguro mga 20 to 30,000 lang yung magagrant sa yo. So before we move on, I would like to stress the fact na having a credit card is not 
alright. So, ano ba yung mga ways para mas madali ka ma-approve? Mas madaling ma-approve kung may existing deposit account ka na sa bank na pinag a mo. Or meron ka ng credit history with the bank. For example, nag-loan ka na doon. Or may checking account ka na sa kanila. They also do credit checking. Um, they check if you're part of the negative database, which is a database or pool of information na mga delinquent payers pagdating sa credit. Kasama na dito yung mga sa checking account, yung mga nag-loan, hindi nagbayad, kumuha ng kotse, lupa, hindi nagbayad, umutang, hindi nagbayad. Now, syempre, if it's your first time to apply for a credit facility such as credit card, mostly magbe-base lang yon sa completeness of the documents you provided, tsaka your current salary. Now, ano ba yung difference ng MasterCard or Visa? Actually guys, hindi lang sila dalawa, madami silang klase. May MasterCard, may Visa, may Union Pay, may JCB, may Diners Club, American Express, these are credit card networks. Meron din naman mga credit card companies na iba-iba yung affiliation nila. For example, BDO, may BDO card na ang kanyang credit card network is JCB, may Amex, may MasterCard, at may Visa. So, you apply doon sa bank. Like for example, BPI, BDO, Metro Bank, City Bank. Yung City Bank, depende sa product type niya, meron niyang affiliate na credit card network. So wala naman sila masyadong pagkakaiba guys. Sa Philippines, ang pinaka-well accepted are Visa and MasterCard. So either of the two, kunin nyo, okay na yon. And usually, may mga promos na specific sa credit card network. Ito, madalas sa Zalora. Pag may MasterCard ka, nagbibigay sila ng 25% off regardless of the bank. Kahit BPI pa yan or Metro Bank. Pagdating naman sa Cebu Pacific, usually may tie-up sila with Visa. So kahit City Bank pa yan or HSBC, basta Visa affiliate yung card mo, pwede mong gamitin. So what are the types of credit cards? Generally, ilalong ko sila sa tatlong categories. First are the cards that earn points. Second, cards with rebates or discounts. And third, cards that give you miles that you can use to book for flights. So, yung sa first part, yung nag-earn ng points, meron tayong regular credit card, meron tayong gold, meron tayong platinum, may prestige, titanium, ayan. Usually, nakaka-earn kayo ng points for a certain amount of spend. For example, every 30 pesos may isang point. And then, these points, pag na-accumulate nyo na, pwede nyo siyang i-convert to goods na nasa catalog nila or vouchers sa SM, for example. The second type of card are the card rebates or discount cards. Instead of getting points, they give you cashback. For example, pag nag-grocery ka, may 3% cashback. Pag nag-BPI Petron credit card ka and nagpag-gasap ka sa Petron, you get 3% cashback. Amore, for example, pag may purchases ka sa affiliates ng Ayala Malls, meron kang certain discounts pag na-charge na sa yung bill. And the third type of card or the miles card, ito yung instead of getting points, you get miles. So yung miles na to, pwede mong i-convert to flight miles or hotel miles na pwede mong gamitin pang book kung frequent traveler ka. So meron tayong Cebu Pacific Get Go na for every purchase, automatic magkakaroon ng points yung Get Go account mo. Ang favorite kong miles card has to be the Citibank Premier Miles kasi may free lounge access siya. Dati unlimited, ngayon limited to two times na lang per year. And pinakamababang requirement ng spend for every one mile. So 30 pesos is to one mile. Kung nagsisimula pa lang kayo, usually ang ibibigay sa inyo either yung um, cashback or yung regular na points cards. Sa bank na pinag ko before, ang minimum amount required for you to be considered for a gold card is 40,000 pesos na monthly income. So, ayun. So, habang tumataas yung bracketing ng card mo, tumataas din yung requirement for the income. So, what are the charges? Madami nagsasabi na ang daming hidden fees ng credit cards. Alam nyo ba na yung Banko Central, meron silang truth in lending act na dapat disclose lahat ng mga charges nyo pag nagpapautang kayo. And to be honest, pag binasa nyo yung details sa credit card na binibigay nilang flyer, yung list of charges, nandun naman lahat ng mga pwede nilang i-charge sa inyo. But for easy reference, i-discuss natin sila tonight or today. First one is the annual fee. So usually, pag nag apply ka ng credit card, yung first year, sasabihin nila, waived na po. Basta mag-apply lang kayo. Then after 12 months, it's a charge kayo ng annual fee. Annual fees are generally charged at the start of each year. Depende sa type of card na ginagamit nyo or i-avail nyo yung annual fee. So, it can go from as low as 1,500 pesos per year to as high as 5,000 pesos 
per year for more premium cards. By the way guys, pwede nyong ipa-wave ang annual fee. Basta may certain spend kayo na reach or minsan, pag kunyari ayaw i-wave sa akin, tatanungin ko lang. For example, sa Metro Bank, magkano yung kailangan kong gastusin in one month para ma-wave mo na yung 5,000 annual fee ko. Kinocomply ko lang. Kung ayaw nyo magbayad ng annual fee for life, Ang marerecommend ko is mag-apply kayo pag ang promo is waived annual fee for life. Para hindi nyo naisipin in the future kung paano ba magpa-waive, magpa-reverse ng charges pagdating sa annual fee. Second or interest charges if you don't pay your bill in full. Usually sa mga bills nyo at end of each month may nakasulat doon na minimum amount due and total statement balance. Pag magbabayad kayo guys, huwag nyo babayaran lang yung minimum amount due kasi magiging subject to interest. For as long as you pay the total amount due, on or before the deadline, palaging zero interest yan. Wala kang babayaran on top of the amount you purchase. Just make sure na pay in full. Even kung ang discrepancy niyan is 10 centavos lang, considered yun as subject sa interest rate. Other charges include yung cash advance. Pwede mo kasing gamitin yung credit card mo to withdraw sa ATMs, makakuha ka ng cash. And pag binil sa'yo, Merong usually plus 4% interest. Guys, huwag niyong gagawin yun kasi masyadong taga siya. Kung may kailangan kayong bayaran, I would recommend na ipang-swipe niyo na lang yung credit card niyo pang bayad. And then after one month, bayaran niyo. Kasi i-convert niyo yung credit line niyo into cash, tapos may interest pa kayo. And same lang naman na one month lang din yung allowance niyo. Interest charges, kung gusto mo magpabalance transfer, kunyari meron kang utang sa card na to, tapos gusto mo i-transfer sa ibang card, tapos gusto mong i-installment na lang, usually merong markup yung card noon or meron siyang additional interest para kumita siya. Pag nag-out of the country ka, usually merong tinatawag na cross-border charges, may 2.5% na additional charge for using your credit card. Meron ding charge pag nag-exceed ka sa allowable credit limit and kunyari nag-bounce yung check na ginamit mo pambayad sa credit card mo. So, lahat naman ng credit card fees, naka-declare yan sa mga fees table nila. You just need to read them. With anything that you get yourself into, most especially if it's money-related, you need to read the details before you sign anything, okay? Now, let's move on to the pros and cons. Is credit card a good or a bad thing? Honestly, I use it to my advantage. It's just a tool that you can use to purchase. And as I said earlier, Kung magiging mabuti ba yun for you or hindi, it depends on how you use it. So, parang kagaya na lang ng knife. Ang ganda ng analogy ko. Parang kagaya na lang ng kutsilyo. You can use it to prepare the food that you'll cook for your family or you can use it to stab someone else. <laughs> parang sobrang ano naman ito. Morbid naman ang example ko. Pero, yun, di ba? So, here are the pros and cons pagdating sa credit card that I can think of based on my personal experience. The very first benefit is convenience. I don't have to think about withdrawing money every single time may kailangan na bilhin. Ang dali na itap na lang pag may bibilihin ka. Lalo na if hindi to pay for something na expensive. Kunyari, pupunta ka sa store tapos bibili ka ng MacBook Pro, kunyari. Magdadala ka ba ng 126,000 sa store, di ba? Mas madali na na may credit card ka. If you need to buy things online or you need to book tickets online, pwede i-input mo na lang yung credit card details mo and you're done. Hindi mo na kailangan pupunta sa 7-Eleven. You don't need to pay additional fee for the transaction or service fee. Hindi mo na kailangan isipin kung may panukli ba si kuya kung magka-cash on delivery ka kasi paid na everything in full. Natanggapin mo na lang yung goods and services mo or hihintayin mo na lang may email sa'yo yung booking ticket mo. Another example is pag nagta-travel ka, syempre di ba may maximum amount of money na pwede mong dalahin. And sometimes, ayaw mo naman magdala ng madaming foreign currency kasi hindi mo alam kung gagastusin mo ba talaga yung amount na yun. So ayaw mong malugi sa foreign exchange. Pag nag-shopping ako usually out of the country, I use my credit card. And for day-to-day -day operations, yung pangkain ko, pang train, pang gala-gala lang, I use my foreign currency cash. Second benefit is it's more secure than bringing loads of money. At least yung card, very small lang siya, kaya mo siyang itago. So kung ang problem nyo naman is paano kung nawala yung credit card mo tapos ang taas ng credit limit mo, edi mas delikado ka. Partly true, pero guys, don't worry kasi yung mga credit card companies, ang number one priority nila pag tatanggap sila ng calls sa kanilang hotline ay ang mga lost or stolen cards. For example, sa BPI, pag binigay sa'yo yung menu, automatic for lost or stolen cards, press 5. Tapos, ang tatanggapin lang 
nung five na yon ay mga lost and stolen cards. Walang ibang other concerns about credit card. Pag ibang concerns, ililipat nila ng ibang agent. Ganun. Or hindi nila tatanggapin yung transaction mo. So, pag nawalan ka ng card, knock on wood, you can call in two minutes, tapos na, napakat mo na siya. Whereas, kung cash, pag nawala siya sa'yo, forever na yan, nawala, hindi mo na yan makukuha or mare-retrieve. The third benefit is it helps with cash flow. As I've mentioned, yung aking washing machine, I pay for it using my credit card ng naka 0% interest. Had I paid full cash for it or straight payment na credit card or naka-installment, pare-pareho lang yung amount na babayaran ko. So I opted for an installment option. Awa kasi guys, for as long as walang additional interest yung babayaran mo, okay lang na gawin yung installment. Fourth reason is deals and offers. Usually, yung mga credit cards, lalo na if you're using a card that's issued by a big bank, usually madami ang tie-ups. Metro Bank, for every 3,000 spent, meron silang isi-send sa akin sa cellphone na code na I can use to redeem sa mga partner merchants sila. Pwede kong ipa-convert sa SMGC, pwede kong i-avail sa Chatime or ibang mga merchants na ka-partner nila. So parang ang saya na may mga bonus ka. Tapos sa BPI naman, usually shaky, tapos minsan sa Starbucks. So these are free things that you get by using your card instead of paying cash. And minsan sa Lazada, if it's your first time to use your credit card, may discount. Pati sa mga airlines, sa Cebu Pacific, for example, if you have a Visa card, di discount ka nila. The fifth benefit, which is very helpful, is that you get to build your credit score. Alam nyo guys, pag tumanda kayo, tapos kailangan nyo nang mag-loan para sa house and lot. Kung wala namang kayong 10 million pang bayad kagad sa bahay nyo, kailangan nyo mag-loan sa banks. And hindi porkit meron kang income to pay for your loan automatic, igagrad ka na ng iyong banko ng loan for the house. They usually check your credit history. Kasama na dyan ang checking account, credit card, past credits. Like, kunyari, nag-auto loan kayo, nagdating housing loan kayo, nagka-negosyo loan kayo. Sa lahat ng credit profile nyo, ipa-background check nila yan. And it helps kung kaya nyo ma-establish na you had credit history and you were diligent sa pagbayad ng inyong mga bills at never kayong naging delinquent. So, nakakatulong yung guys. And I think ang pinaka- Madaling way to start your credit profile or credit score is through credit cards. Feeling ko mas madaling ma-approve for credit card kesa sa checking account sa banks, lalo na kung sa BPI kayo mag apply ng checking account. It's actually helpful, lalo na kung kunyari you're thinking of getting into business tapos hindi nyo naman kayang i-finance 100% yung inyong business. Maganda na at the very least meron kayong credit records or credit profile na na-establish or na-build. And siguro last benefit na iisip ko right now is that in case of emergency, you have a credit card to run to. I don't recommend na you charge your hospital bills sa credit card. Pero paano ko niya, kung nasa ibang bansa kayo, tapos biglang na hospital kayo, syempre, hindi nyo naman kagad makiklaim yung insurance nyo, hindi nyo matatawagan yung company nyo to issue you a letter of authorization para i-waive yung charges. Paano yung gagawin nyo guys, ba? So it's nice na meron kang contingency plan sa mga times sa baka bigla mong kailanganin na ng aid pagdating sa finances. So, that's where credit card comes in. Now, for the cons, guys, syempre, let's be transparent. Hindi naman rainbows and butterflies palagi ang credit card. May mga downside din yan. And, ang unang-unang downside is, you might tend to overspend because you don't feel yung paglabas ng pera. Yung ibang tao kasi, mas gusto nilang nagka-cash kasi physical money yung nilalabas nila. At nararamdaman nila na yung 1,000 bill, 500 bill, 100 bill lumalabas sa wallet nila. Pero pag credit card kasi, it's just a piece of plastic. Tapos wala siyang, like it's just an amount sa cash register. Pero psychologically, hindi minsan nafe-feel ng iba na ang laki na nagagastos. So if you're not very prudent pagdating sa spending mo or medyo tagilid ka pagdating sa paggastos, Ayun, warning yon. Baka ma-overestimate mo yung capacity mo to pay or ma-underestimate mo yung iyong purchases. Second downside is you can get into debt as in real trouble, lugmok levels kung hindi ka knowledgeable sa pinapasok mo. Ang dami kong kilala na parang early 20s pa lang kami, may mga nagbe-message sa akin, how do you pay off a credit card debt? 22 pa lang kami, paano ka nagkautang sa credit card ng sobrang laki? Apparently, when they applied for their credit card, hindi sila knowledgeable na dapat pala nagbabayad ka on time, may interest pala pag minimum amount due lang, pag na-delay ka pala na isang araw lang sa pagbayad, ang laki na nakagad ng charges. So, alam nyo yun, lahat ng mga bagay na yun could have been avoided 
had these people done their research. So, if you're gonna get into credit card or if you're gonna apply for credit card, make sure you're knowledgeable ka. And itong video na to, ito yung purpose nun. At the very least, alam nyo yung basics ng credit cards. To avoid interest rates, Pay on time, pay in full always. Don't swipe kung wala kang available na cash pang bayad. Third con is it has the highest interest rates compared with other facilities or loan facilities. For example, a personal loan on the average is about 1.2% per month na add-on rate. Pagdating sa credit card, it's 4% per month. 3.75 actually, percent per month na add-on rate. Dahil isa siya sa mga pinakamadaling i-approve na loan facility, of course, wala din yung collateral. Mataas din yung interest rate yan or yung risk premium ng bank na isa-charge sa inyo. So, kung ikaw yung tipo ng tao na talagang tagilid, yung tipong hindi nako-control yung sarili pagdating sa shopping, keep that in mind. Mahal ang interest ng credit card. Fourth is, there are scammers or fraud na involved sa credit card. May mga phishing for information. Uh, hindi phishing na parang, hmm, nag-fish ako kung may gusto ba sa akin yung crush ko. So, yun yung mga kumukuha ng information sa credit cards. Now, how do you avoid this lang? Pag may nag-email sa inyo, asking for any information about your credit card, report nyo. Kasi never nag-email yung banks about details. You should not disclose any information, yung 16-digit ng credit card nyo, or yung CVC nyo, which is the 3-digit pin sa likod, or yung expiration, unless it's a secured platform. So, paano mo ba malalaman? Meron mga logos, lalagay ko na lang sa screen, na usually, like, MasterCard Secure, yung mga ganon. Ibig sabihin, safe yung transaction nyo. And what's nice about credit card companies ngayon is that pag may tinry kang i-charge sa credit card mo, usually nagsisend sila sa phone mo, yung naka-register sa credit card mo, ng one-time PIN that you need to enter para mag-proceed yung transaction. Unless na lang naka-save na yung credit card mo dun sa website and may previous purchases ka na. If ever man na may mga charges na mag-come up sa credit card nyo na hindi nyo ginawa, you can always call your credit card company and file for... I forgot the term eh. Ayun. I found the term. You can file for a dispute. And your credit card company will reverse the charges. And last but not the least, kung delinquent ka sa payment ng credit cards mo, you can get into the negative data bank. You know, you can use your credit card to build up your or rack up your credit score. Pero you can, it can also be detrimental sa yung delinquent payer ka. So there's this thing called the negative data bank, which I said earlier in a pool of credit information ng mga tao. So for example, may credit card ka ng BDO, tasa hindi ka nagbayad. Then ten years, twenty years later, magsasart kita na family mo, maglooan ka sa BPI for housing loan, kasi bibili na kayo, magsasart kita na family mo. Kahit na kay BDO ka na ka utang at delinquency, makikita pare ni BPI ay yung delinquent payments mo. So, yun lang. Just be careful lang. Hindi siya balit na bagay, guys. Kasi it means na once na nasa negative data bank ka, marked for life ka na. Kung baga, scarred ka na for life. Hanggat may outstanding ka doon, napakaliit ng chance na ma-approve ka for all other availment of loan or credit facility. Just make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. Be responsible kasi whatever you do with your credit card, it will have an impact on your future credit rating. Alright guys, so that's it for the first part of our credit card series, our credit card 101, our credit card basics. What you need to know if you're planning to apply for your first ever credit card. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope, I hope, I hope guys, natulungan ko kayo or I gave you an idea of how credit card works, ano yung benefits niya and disadvantages. As I told you guys, sa simula pa lang, it's not a bad tool. It depends on how you use it. So make sure guys that if you're applying for your first ever credit card, you keep in mind lahat ng mga reminders ko na pay in full, pay on time. So thank you so much guys for watching today's video. If you did find this helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Share with me kung anong concerns you about credit cards. I'll try my best to answer them for you. And of course, if you're new to my channel, please don't leave without hitting that subscribe and bell button beside it to be part of our Thea Bells family. For more adulting videos, click here to subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you on my next video. Bye!